And good afternoon. This morning we looked at the first two of the three ways to rely through actions on the spiritual teacher. We looked at the first, which is um, offering through making material offerings, offering material things. And the second was serving him and paying respect with body and speech. So those were the first two that we looked at and moreover, we saw that when making offerings to one's, one's Lama and seeing him as indivisible in nature from the, the Buddha, in this way, when offering to the Lama, one is actually offering to all the Buddhas, and thereby so much merit is accumulated, and this merit leads, leads to the attainment of the highest city of enlightenment itself. Uh, <coughs> Some before continuing with the text, let's um, come to the question this morning that, that we didn't have time to, to answer. The first part of the question then was how to know how best to skillfully deal with the situation, when to, to engage and, and perhaps say something in a difficult situation, or, and, and if so, what to say, or when to not engage, but rather to, to uh, stay silent. Well, it's difficult to answer that, it's difficult to, to know in every situation how to, to, to proceed. The, perhaps the best guidance to go on, which is most relevant when there is, for example, a conflict or difficult interaction with someone that you know, because you know that person, you have an idea of whether they would be receptive to what you have to say or not. And if they are someone who is receptive to what you have to say, then perhaps talking to them in a skillful manner will be well received. If they are not someone who is, is going to be at all open to what you have to say, then it's best not to say anything. And where the, the situation involves a, a, a stranger, there it is even more difficult to know how to proceed. Because you don't, know, you don't have a relationship with this person, you don't know uh, their personality, so therefore you really um, uh, would just be guessing as to whether to get involved or not. So in brief, it is difficult to know how to skillfully uh, deal with, with uh, difficult situations. 
when for, or for those who have developed clairvoyance, it's much easier. Then they can um, immediately identify um, the, what would be more skillful to say. But as ordinary beings without clairvoyance, not having this um, ability on our side, it is much more difficult. But if, to the best of your ability, you can ascertain that to say this or do that may be skillful, then one can try. And if it, if it doesn't work, well, at least you tried. But if you're not sure, then you may make the decision not to, to try, not to say or do something, and then perhaps that is the right decision. But it's, it's not no hard and fast, do this, don't do that. <laughs> And Malan uh <laughs> The, the second question about, in a general sense, about how to um, deal with situations where you re on the receiving end of, 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 you're the recipient of conflict, but you uh, respond with kindness, but then the aggressor once again continues in this behavior, for example, in the situation of domestic violence, then how, well, how best to deal with this? There's quite some similarity between uh, these two questions. And again, what one um, ideally needs to do is if one has trained one's mind well, then one will not come under the influence oneself of anger, no matter what the other person is doing. This means one's own mind is, is not overwhelmed by anger or by fear. And one can think more, uh, more clearly in the heat of the moment. And then one can try to respond with kindness, to respond in a way to calm the situation, to pacify the person who's upset. And when the conflict then has abated, one tries to find the right time, maybe a little while later, and have a conversation, and try and build a close and genuine connection. And in this way, to uh, limit these kinds of um, uh, aggressive interactions in the future. That, that being said, though, there is no guarantee that the other person will be receptive to this. 
So it really depends on the individual situations. Whatever the situation is, the very best thing that the individual can do, independence on their prior training, their training before being in the situation, is to prevent the arisal of anger, their mind to be calm and spacious, because then they are thinking clearly. And thinking clearly, they may be, they can, uh, the person can then respond more skillfully, which may be to apologize, it may be to say nothing, it, it, may, it may be for them to, to take some physical distance. So, in whatever situation, if one can remain with one's mind unafflicted, so one can think clearly, this is best. Because also with a clearer uh, a, um, a way of thinking, one may well come to the situation that the two of us, this is not going anywhere good. I need to remove myself from the situation. I need to separate myself physically from the situation. And if that's um, what turns out to be best in that situation, then that certainly should be done. Nanga Kareladna Talk about situations such as these. It's really difficult to say in this situation act like this, in this situation act like that, because there is such tremendous uh, variety and it's also dependent on the skill of, of both of, the, of the, the party that we are talking about, as well as the, the relationship with the other person and their current uh, uh, mental state. But the one general thing that one can, can make is that if the, the, person, the recipient of the unwanted activity, the, of, the, the aggress of the aggression, if the recipient has trained their mind well, they will be able to skillfully ensure that afflictions don't arise and dominate their mind. Then their mind will stay calm and they can think clearly. And in that moment, the person before them is overwhelmed by the afflictions. But the other person, being a, a, a skilled practitioner, they will think clearly and be able to think, what is the best course of action for me to take right now? But that requires extensive uh, um, hearing and reflection because this is the practice of patience, which is a mind that stays uh, unafflicted in the face of adversity. And therefore, the mind being unafflicted, it, the mind can, or the person, can act under the influence of wisdom, compassion, love, and so forth, and thereby skillfully deal with the situation. But that is difficult and takes extensive prior training. So whether the recipient of the aggression is a skilled practitioner or not, one must also say that where they are not able to resolve the situation well, they then must uh, 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 make sure they are safe in the moment and seek support from, from the authorities or from, from specialized charities and gain support and protection. This, this too is important. And if a person who is skilled in their, their mental training, the one thing that they will definitely be, be largely able to, to limit is responding in a way that aggravates the situation further. 
they will be able to think clearly how best to respond. And also, that, therefore, afterwards, they will still be thinking clearly. And they can think if they should continue in this uh, relationship or if they need to separate themselves, and if so, uh, where to get support from. Somebody <laughs> Tuin so I hope my, my answers suffice. Unfortunately, it's not as clear-cut as one would like, but this is the complexity of, of samsaric beings. Okay. Thank you very much. So then we can continue with uh, where we concluded this morning. So in the published book, we're at the top of page 41, and in the handouts, we're in the middle of page, just above the middle of the page 47. The third is the main one, which is practicing without going against these instructions. So this refers to the previous page, where there are three ways to rely through actions, and now we're coming to the third, which is, as we see, uh, the main one, pr practicing without going against his instructions. Okay. Zikpe <laughs> It has to be true, but it's good to be one in the Lamalia and Yam Tikasurish. Um, Lamatinadi, Tisa Lamigi, Damazulia, Coaling, Jung Gombore, Sada, and the Jig, Jamnija Gombore, Sada, the Ne, Surum Sungore, Yoranji Luma is in nature to be Surum Sungore, the Ned in the Sandor Gombore, Sma, Lamiga Canon, Shawadi, then now an ancient Yanazuga, and she took Yam Sulenche Trubaina, so to get Yam Sulemba in the D, Yam Sulemba Dida, and Dubigi, and the Chigay, Chibe, Chicone, Lamala, Lamatin Sutriese. So we see uh, the third is the main one, which is practicing without going against his instructions. So the instructions refer to spiritual in instructions or one's, one's teachings. So where one has received teachings from one's lama, then these are to be um, and, uh, reflected on and, and, and integrated. So if one receives teachings on, on the sufferings of samsara, then this is, these are your instructions to meditate on and integrate. If one receives teachings on love and compassion, this is what is to be cultivated within. Or if one receives instructions or teachings on the uh, ethical restraints, such as the re restraining one's body, speech, and mind, then this is what is to be cultivated. え、だでねぎ、チキラミギニャムネンドソシオレセジマソンアンジュギニャムネンチェバイネ、でなまにやばちにやばちゃぐるにぐるわ。だらミギマガナワセムジェソチュチキオマラタセジマジアセテンソン
Sürüm son ayında, sonra çevir. Sürüm son ayında dedi, Lame kada miga var, çubar dedi. Şimdi sen, diyen sen, Lame ne gireyiz, tu ne var, yungur yese. Şimdi din anca da anca ki, Nemle Lame ki ma, Nemle de ne dene çeşiyo asayla karoz, Benin anca ki, Çağ atıya, kora koraya, Önce ki, Çeho püya la sobadan, Öndü su çeğore, Dine çeğore, Sede, Ma son, son bu de, Önce ki, Önce ki, Son bana şey, Lağlen tavayına, Önce ki, Kaşin çubar yes, Dese çubayına, Lame tu ne var, yungur yes. Şimdi, <laughs> this sits very closely with what we looked at last night, in particular the, the first verse, in that by uh, following the advice or implementing the instructions from one's Lama, in other words, practicing what he teaches, this will please the, uh, one's teacher. And similarly, going against what he taught, acting in a contradictory manner to what he taught. This will displease one's lama. And moreover, pleasing one's teacher is not to be understood as only in his presence. So for example, when one receives a teaching, responding well, but then when one isn't before one's teacher and going about one's daily life, one just continues doing what one wants even when it's contrary to the teachings. This is incorrect. So for example, if one receives teachings ab ab about the, the faults of killing and the encouragement, the instructions not to kill, and one uh, willingly uh, uh, goes along and agrees, but then goes about your daily life and, and kills insects and so forth, this is, is not correct. And one should understand that, th that even when it's done not in front of the teacher, this will displease, displease him because it's contrary. To, to what he says. Rather, what one should be doing is engaging in, in studying the teachings once received, meditating on those teachings, perhaps engaging in prostrations or mantra recitation or making offerings, whatever it is that one has been guided to do. Because this is what pleases um, um, the teacher, as we saw last night, and as we, we see here. This is practicing in accordance with his advice. Ana dini zor indiyesi de, da dini zor indiyesi de, da çubuk konu, anne la manya bacı var da zor oluyor. Stang anca la manya bacı da anca la, anne o çıkan sansiyon konu, la manya bacı var, lüngü konu, la manya bacı var. Dine anne çubuk konu, la manya bacı var seçil. Da la meki, da çubuk konu, la ma çiğti na de la, dine ki sumuyor bana ne, zor di da çubuk konu, la manya bacı var diye esir orda. Dini zor indiyesi de. As our text says, the third is the main one. So amongst the three ways to, to, to rely on the, the spiritual teacher through actions, this is the primary one. And, and again, its meaning is that our physical behavior should be in accordance with the, the, the teachings that we receive. Our way of speaking should be in accordance with the teachings we receive. And of course, our, our, our mind, the, the motivation behind our activities, should be in accordance with the, the teachings we receive. Ağrı resine, ağrı çünkü lamı ki nemlin çeşi olsa idi, de çünkü lamı ya ağrı ki lüngü ayı konu, hani lamı ki şefşi şuya maya da, hani susul ki lamı ya nengur çöpü puya, metze sansın ki dene ki puya meyve, puya meyve yine, lamı ki ma ağrı ki lamı ki nemlin dursu çe, çeğor bine ağrı ki ne çekor, çambak kum, simcan hamcela, çambak kum, nince kum, hancı yusim kum kure se son şabadi, Anzuk Jesadi, Ma sun bade ngazo ma jebe ina ngazo nyamle ngombe tuhayo marwa 
Yan to look a little further at why the, this third type of, of relying through actions, that of practicing in accordance with his advice, is the, the, main, of the, the ma main one of the three, is because whilst not everyone will have an abundance of materials or resources and thereby be able to make, make offerings to, to their teacher, nor will everyone have the opportunity to uh, physically serve him. But all students have the capacity to train their mind in accordance with, with, with his teachings. So therefore, this third way to rely on the teacher is something that is accessible to all students. Moreover, the first two should be understood as being aids to the third in that it's through making um, a material offerings or giving material support as well as offering service and, and, and speaking well to and about one's teacher. Through doing that with a sincere and genuine motivation, one accumulates merit, but one will not solely one will not accumulate a path in one's continuum. One will not generate any realizations solely through relying on those first two practices. Rather, by creating merit through making offerings, through serving, and so forth, one is creating merit that will aid the third one, which is practicing in accordance with his advice. It is that and that alone that will lead to, to the, the teacher's students generating realization within themselves, taking the, the teachings that they've received and establishing them within their own mind. And it's in this way that students develop paths, paths that will lead them towards liberation and enlightenment. And it is that spiritual progress or spiritual development by the student that is actually fulfilling the heart wish of the teacher. The primary um, hope or, or goal of the teacher is to guide their students to freedom from suffering. Therefore, when one is practicing the teachings that one has received, developing them within, that is fulfilling the heart wish of one's teacher. And therefore, the third one is the main one. Lama 
Beni çizim bile rivatı ve lambi ki kudun de düşüne lamba çizde nemlen çebi ne kapt dedi ki lomal başı gorda dedi dedi şey şu yani çişi gorma da çizim bile rivatı ki dedi ne parma bunu mu şu çe ne mu düşüne lambi ki bakan ne nemlen çigor va çizde de gidu lomal çizde gidu mangbo ne çazan ki lamal yani dedi kasıre Kuzucuya Çoğuşundaki Çünkü Different students with their different uh, teachers have uh, different possibilities of interaction. So there are the, so those who are students of of um, very famous teachers, those with a lot of students, such as His Holiness, there. His many students do not have, have much opportunity to directly engage with the teacher and serve the teacher, cooking and cleaning, uh, uh, doing laundry and so forth. There are, the, there are a few who do that, but the vast majority of students do not have uh, the opportunity to serve their teacher in that way. So for them, the primary way to serve their teacher is this third method, that of receiving teachings, reflecting on those teachings, cultivating them in repeatedly over a sustained period. And this is the case for all of us. We, we were either on the internet or we go to India, receive teachings from His Holiness, and then we return home and we try and cultivate those teachings inside. And that, and that is how we rely on our teacher through action. There are other teachers and, and, and students who have a different relationship. Malaripa had this at times, where he was able to directly serve his, his um, teacher and cook and clean and so forth. So in, these, in those kinds of situations, very often then the, the student's primary uh, mode of practice will be that of physically serving because they have the um, opportunity to do so. But that is quite restricted. But what is open to all is the primary way to train, to, to, to rely on the teacher, which is to train your mind through their teachings. So this is a further reason why, why this is the, the main way to rely on a teacher through practice. <laughs> Ne <gülüyor> Sosyal 
Sosuke, Sosuki, Gaien, Din Lunga Nigi Kone Lamalia, and the ship she had a chasa regress or that, the name is that somebody so or yes. Just like not all st uh, or very few students have the, the opportunity to offer, uh, offer service um, to, to care for and to, to attend on their teacher, but they can accomplish or strive to accomplish the teachings that the teacher is given, so too not all students have a, a material abundance with which they can make offerings to, to their teacher. And here then one should recognize that the primary offering one makes, the, the principle that one, is that of practice, of the teachings one receives, applying oneself to them. This is the offering the teacher most wants to receive. So if one does not have an abundance of material offerings, that's fine. One can visualize, make offerings on, a, on the level of imagination. This will serve the purpose too. And one offers one's material possessions on the level of imagination. One offers one's body on the level of imagination. One offers one's life on the level of imagination. And in this way, one can accumulate tremendous merit. So this then is a way that even those without an abundance of material resources can't make offerings to the teacher. And for those who have um, that combination of um, an abundance of material offerings as well as the, um, the, the wish to make those offerings and the capacity to do so, they're not held back in, in, in some way, they can and should offer directly. But nowhere, at, at no time, should one understand these teachings to, to either state or to imply that one has any compulsion to offer, to offer um, mat mat um, what one physically, materially owns, and certainly not give everything away. 
That would be to misunderstand this and, and other teachings on this topic. One needs to look within oneself, get to know oneself well, and act in accordance with one's genuine capacity. Only f a, a fault is likely, or, or difficulty, hardships are likely to follow if one gives what one really cannot, if one gives too much, because then one will generate regret. One will go without oneself, and that will serve as an obstacle to one's spiritual development. So therefore, one should give, but only in accordance with one's capacity, and if one is giving solely on the level of visualization, that's still excellent, and that should be done. Because through offering in that way, on the level of, of visualization, one is creating merit. And most importantly, if one is taking the variety of teachings one receives and studying them, meditating on them, cultivating them ever more deeply within, through this one is accumulating vast merit. And in the future, one will be able to make material offerings that one cannot now. One will be able to offer service directly, even though one cannot now. All of those opportunities will come through the process of accumulating merit. So for these reasons, again, of the three ways to rely through actions, the third is the main one. Now there's a quotation provided from the Garland of Birth Stories which presents um, what, what Lama Tsongkhapa has just um, said. The offering to be made in return for his help is practice that accords with his instructions. Ngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngā
before anything else, or more so than anything else, is that we cultivate those teachings within, that we give rise to, to uh, when, and are dominated by minds of ethics, by minds of love, of compassion, and of wisdom. And this then is to practice to a practice that accords with his instructions. So that what this verse then is coming down to is the offering of practice, where we receive teachings from our, our teacher, and we don't merely just respect them, we cultivate them within. We cultivate them within so they arise within us. That is the offering of practice, and that is the supreme offering to make to our teachers. どうしてなんてこう話が上級公公でさ、だ。で、つるむそうやく公公で、準備と、先ば公公で、どうしてなんてけ、ニャムレンジェ、準備かぜ、天社ばでけ、ラミが、そんばなんし、そそられてばいな
that one receives, the teachings or instructions or advice, and to cultivate that within. And where we have the opportunity, in dependence on these virtuous minds we are de developing, one can also practice um, um, a generosity, whether on the level of imagination or, or, um, or through actual material offerings, as well as where one has the opportunity to offer, to offer service. So this then is, in brief, how to uh, rely on one's spiritual teacher. Now that we have a, a good understanding of this practice, of the qualities to look for in a teacher, qualities to develop as a student, and how to rely, we come to the next part, which is on the benefits of doing so and the faults of not relying on a, on a teacher. Turning to the text, the benefits of reliance. The scriptures say that you will approach the state of a Buddha, that the victors will rejoice, that you will not be deprived of virtuous friends, that you will not fall to, the low, to lower rebirths, and that you will not easily succumb to bad karma and afflictions. Since you will not transgress the conduct of bodhisattvas, remaining mindful of it, your accumulation of excellent qualities will grow higher and higher, and all your temporary and ultimate goals will be accomplished. <laughs> Looking at the first benefit, you will approach the state of a Buddha through generating stable faith in one's teacher. One's mind becomes open and receptive to his teachings. Moreover, one sees him as a role model, someone whom you want to emulate. Therefore, one will receive his teachings and strive to cultivate them within, within so that one emulates our teacher. And in this way, through this method, one uh, progresses towards the state of Buddhahood. <laughs> Through relying on our teacher, developing good qualities within and progressing towards Buddhahood, this then leads to the second result, um, a second benefit mentioned in the text, which is that the 
the Buddhas will observe that this dear suffering mother sentient being, through relying on their teacher, is accumulating extensive merit. And what does it mean to accumulate extensive merit? It means that the minds of virtue within that being are growing and expanding. So, or to express it differently, that being is developing many excellent good qualities. This then leads to, to the, 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 the Buddhas to rejoice because they look at the suffering mother being and they see that they are on the right path, they are heading towards liberation and enlightenment. And that is their heart wish for each and every suffering mother being to gain freedom, freedom from the suffering realms of samsara. So when they observe, uh, 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 observe someone who's relying on, on the teacher and thereby developing, brings great joy to the Buddhas. And that's it. Givishin then the text then presents a third benefit of relying on one's teacher, which is that you will not be deprived of virtuous friends. So through developing a close and trusting relationship in this life, in this very life then, from this point forward, you can be confident of being guided skillfully under the, the love and care of one's spiritual teacher. And through this establishment of an ever-deepening connection, which comes about in dependence on the, the skills of the teacher, the qualities of the teacher and your own mind of, of faith, and you practicing in accordance with his teachings, you are strengthening that connection, which will ensure that in lives to come as well, you will uh, easily, readily uh, meet sp uh, spiritual teachers, recognize them as such, and be receptive to their ongoing guidance and care. This is um, the, the outcome, this, this benefit is the outcome of relying well on a teacher. On the other hand, though, if one uh, relies on a teacher, but then it's doubts arise, then one uh, believes those doubts and then gives up. This will just create obstacles, both in this and in future lives. But through relying well on a teacher in the way that the text has presented, this will not only open up one's own spiritual development in this and future lives, but will ensure that one will meet and recognize and be receptive to the guidance of spiritual teachers in this and future lives, and that the re-establishing of these relationships is something that will come about with ease. <laughs> Thank you.
the fourth benefit that the text points to is that by being, relying on one's teacher, in particular through being open and receptive to his teachings and then cultivating them, them within, so, um, it's the, the, the um, practicing in accordance with his advice, one will develop an ethical outlook and thereby restrain from non-virtue that would otherwise lead to one falling into the lower realms and taking rebirth as an animal, a spirit, or as a hell being. But as the text says, you will not fall to, the low, to lower rebirths because through relying on one's spiritual teacher, one will be creating extensive virtue and thereby will be reborn as a human or God in the higher realms. <laughs> Lenga <laughs> Then <laughs> The fifth benefit is that through relying on the spiritual teacher, you will not easily succumb to bad karma and afflictions. Because through relying on one's teacher, one will be guided in to recognize for oneself the pervasiveness of faults within cyclic existence and thereby gen generate definite emergence, the determination to emerge from these suffering realms of samsara. To generate definite emergence, one's teacher will not only guide one in recognizing the faults of samsara, but also to recognize the causes of uh, this, this process that is cyclic existence, namely contaminated karma and afflictions, with the ignorance of self-grasping as the very root of all our suffering. Recognizing through the guidance of our teachers that our afflictions are our true enemies, our actual enemies, we will strive in his further teachings on the cultivation of the wisdom realizing emptiness, we will strive to abandon the afflictions. And in this way, one will not be defeated by the afflictions or easily succumb to them. <laughs> Andrew Tata the, the, the fourth benefit, that you will not fall to the lower realms. The, through relying on one's teacher, one will be guided 
to cultivate the various trainings which are shared with practitioners of initial capacity, it's through these that one ensures that one will not fall into the lower realms in our next rebirth. An independence on those, a cultivation of those trainings, one's teacher will, will guide you in the training shared with a practitioner of intermediate capacity, whereby one comes to recognize the, the sufferings of samsara in it, their entirety and give rise to the determination to, to gain freedom, not just from the low realms, but at samsara in its entirety. And that then is, was that, the fifth point, that you will not easily succumb to bad karma and afflictions. So therefore, the fourth and the fifth uh, benefits of relying on a teacher relate to the training shared with the practitioner of initial and intermediate capacity. <laughs> ຈັ່ງຍິນຈະຈັ່ງຊິແມ່ນອັນນີ້ຈະຕົງໄວ້ພາຊິນຈູ່ຍິນຍັມແລ້ວສົບຕິນຢູ່ຕູ້ສຍ
these last three uh, uh, benefits, the fourth, fifth, and sixth, these refer to being trained by one's spiritual teacher in cultivating the, the teachings which are, are, are shared to the practitioner of initial capacity, there, thereupon building the practice into the practices of a practitioner of intermediate capacity, and following from that, being guided in the trainings unique to a practitioner of greatest capacity. So th these are the fourth, fifth, and sixth benefits of relying on one's spiritual teacher. And through doing, doing so, we now come to the seventh, which is your accumulation of excellent qualities will grow higher and higher. Through uh, training in the, the practice, in the practices shared with the practitioner of initial capacity, one is uh, accumulating vast stores of, of merit, or, or uh, to express it uh, differently, many excellent good qualities. So too, when one is developing the qualities associated with a practitioner of intermediate capacity, one is accumulating ever more merit or ever more good qualities and so forth. And in this way, we come to the, the seventh benefit of the accumulation of excellent qualities. And it's through these that we will attain our temporary and ultimate goals. The temporary goals then refer uh, 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 most explicitly to happiness of this and our next life. In other words, happiness in this very life, as well as uh, attaining a good rebirth. And the ultimate goal, particularly in our context of the Mahayana, we understand to refer to the attainment of Buddhahood, coming about in dependence on the aband abandonment of the afflictions together with their seeds and imprints. So these qualities, all of these um, seven good qualities, come about in dependence on relying on a spiritual teacher. And um, this term uh, benefits, we can understand as to, be, to mean results. So what are the results of relying on a teacher? What are the benefits of relying on a, on a teacher? It, it's the seven presented here. These will be attained through relying on a teacher. If we, we rather rely on ourselves, well, it's, we're not going to be able to achieve those same results. But these results do follow through relying on our, our spiritual teacher. Uh, <coughs> え、新人古月にさ、万度尿尿で、レデ、中年、あね、セバキュアダン。三月八度目ばら、ユンプワソジェ、ケザナムジェ、シギン、シギ、ネンバソジェ、ペンシンドチェオロソンソーサ。Furthermore, through serving and paying respect to the spiritual teacher, the karma for experiencing the lower realms is exhausted directly in this lifetime through only slight harm to body and mind, or else through experiences in dreams. It is said that the benefits are enormous, outshining the roots of virtue of making offerings and the like to innumerable Buddhas. <laughs> ダンガンジュゲテジルンガイスムダンアンチゲテネチュピオコネニャムネチラミテンチャニャムネチアドアネカリオンゴスネンガンドニョウベレナムチェディラルセムラネバチャモザマムシテダンガンジュリケワチマ
through um, um, relying on the teacher in the way that's been presented here, first through thought and then through action, and in these three ways here, doing so with genuine uh, respect, and in particular with this respectful attitude that has been generated in dependence on reflecting on the good qualities of the teacher and their great kindness, then putting into practice their teachings, in other words, practicing as one is being guided in, one will accumulate extensive merit, as, as was presented in the previous paragraph. And, through, and the result of all this merit that one is accumulating is that previously accumulated non-virtue will now be purified. And how will it be purified? Well, it may, may not be completely eradicated and therefore not need to ripen, but it may be weakened so that it ripens in a minor way in this life, and in that way is either greatly exhausted or perhaps completely exhausted. So therefore, previously accumulated strong uh, neg negative karma that has the potential, the potency, the strength to lead to rebirth in the lower realms, instead is so weakened by this accumulation of virtue that comes about in dependence on practicing uh, in accordance with one's teachings, that those karmic seeds are so weakened that they ripen in, in the case of a mental, um, a, a, of a headache or a, a mere physical illness. And in this way, they are purified in this life, they're exhausted in this life, and one will not have to experience them in a future life. <laughs> Nilamnalia,刚刚说,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们的名字,这个,你们
one thereby weakens the previously accumulated non-virtue. And through the weakening of these imprints, they may well ripen in this life and ripen in a way that we can easily handle. And the more virtue that we accumulate, the more negativity we will purify. So just like if there's a large block of ice, the more heat that's applied to it, the quicker it will melt. So too, the more virtue we accumulate, the more uh, of previously accumulated non-virtue, we will ripen, uh, uh, we will we weaken, and we'll experience it as a very mild suffering, such as a physical illness or a mental suffering such as in a dream. Or, if it were those of, of particular strength, those non-virtues of particular strength, they may still, despite being weakened, be able to propel us to rebirth in the lower realms, but because they have been sufficiently weakened, one is immediately reborn out of those lower realms, like a, a, a ball bouncing back up. All these, uh, all uh, this effect on our previously non, uh, accumulated non-virtue comes about in dependence on the strength of the virtue that we accumulate under the guidance of our teachers. Gesa Ningarele Mm. The section then concludes with the sentence, it is said that the benefits are enormous, outshining the roots of virtue of making offerings and the like to innumerable Buddhas. So this then ties in very closely to what we've been looking at, that if one compares the virtue accumulated from making offerings to innumerable, innumerable Buddhas to the virtue accumulated through relying on one's spiritual teacher, it, it is one makes far more virtue through relying on one's teacher because it is like offering to all the Buddhas and in particular one is developing the mind of the Dharma under his influence and guidance and it's in this way that we create so much virtue that weakens and eradicates large stores of previously accumulated non-virtue. <laughs> Lamalia, Zanzingi Mitchik 
Summarize what we've looked at this this weekend then is to rely uh, the practice of relying on t- on the teacher is as with all the Buddhist practices about training our mind, developing our way of thinking, and in this context, it's about uh, our way of thinking of relating to our spiritual teacher. This chapter started with looking at the qualities of um, an authentic, a genuine teacher. We had those 10 good qualities. So where one has come to recognize one's teacher as having these good qualities, these are what one reflects on. Reflects on the, uh, his qualities that he has uh, on his continuum, on his mind, and thereby how he expresses this through his speech and his physical behavior. So through reflecting on his many good qualities, one develops a deep faith in him. Then one adds, adds to this a clear recognition of the kindness and the benefit that he brings into, into one's life. This serves to make one open and receptive to his guidance, wanting to hear his teachings, overcoming any obstacles or hardships to receive them, and then being receptive to them and they letting them touch one, motivate one, inspire one. This then leads to the uh, relying on him through practice. And we saw that there's uh, making mater- material offerings, supporting him materially, re- uh, serving him with respect, uh, communicating with him in a respectful manner. And then thirdly, and most importantly, was taking the teachings one receives and cultivating them within, living one's life in accordance with the teachings that he, that he presents, knowing that this is what pleases him. What pleases him is for for us to cultivate the minds of the Dharma within and have them guide us. <coughs> so, uh, cultivate minds in particular, such as ethical restraint and the other many good qualities that we are trained in. In doing so, then, training in this way, practicing in this way, brings many good benefits, as we saw here. And all those good benefits follow from relying on the teacher. So we'll conclude here, having looked at the benefits of relying, and now next week, next time, we'll start with looking at the opposite end, at the faults of not relying. And thank you very much.